everyone and welcome to another painting session a part de, where I just talk about what I'm doing and how I'm painting and what I'm painting and all of that jazz so I do hope you enjoy it thank you so much for your amazing comments on my last video and yeah so in this painting session uh, I haven't actually got that big an idea about what I'm going to do so I've got a canvas sheet a cotton canvas sheet that I'm going to work on and I was thinking of doing some kind of like sea, tranquil, peaceful landscape with a ship. I often paint galleons and things. However, I still have problems getting all the proportions right on the ship, so I might do that so I can really work on it. And I'm going to test out a couple of things. So, I normally use Gamblin paint. They're my absolute favourite, they're non-toxic, they're just so beautiful to work with. However, I have run out of a couple of colours and I've really, really, for years, wanted to try out this brand M. Graham. Ta-da! And so I thought to get the replacement colours, I actually will try out the M. Graham paints instead. So I just got a couple just to test out and see what they're like. So I'm going to actually use them. I've already kind of like tested a little bit and so far I feel like they're really smooth and really, really amazing quality. They're slightly less expensive than the Gamblin. I think by like a couple of pounds or something, so not a great deal, it's cheaper, but then they're super high quality, so, you know, um, I do think that they are going to be a really, really good option if you like non-toxic paint. There are a few reviews on them online floating around, but they're not a great deal, which is kind of odd, because I just think they're, they seem amazing, so yeah, uh, so I'm looking forward to trying that, and with those paints, I also got this, which is a Walnut, Walnut Owl Kid me, medium, right. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is going to be interesting because it is one of, it's basically just a medium that you mix with your paints. However, I don't know whether you can see, probably not, but it's extremely fluid. Now, I normally use the gel type mediums from Gambon, so they're my absolute favourite. I've tried a number of mediums. I also really, really like Winsor & Newton Liquin. That's also absolutely incredible. Uh, I sometimes do go back to that one. It sort of has a funny smell. <laughs> but apart from that, it's it's very nice. It's really, it makes your paint so, so smooth. Like, it just feels like melting butter and all that jazz. So really amazing. But uh, with the... Um, these very fluid mediums, you sometimes, I, I don't I don't tend to use them basically. I use the more gel type mediums, so the Gamblin gel, so you've got the Gamblin solvent free gel, you've got the Gamblin gal kid gel, and you've got also the Neo McGill, which I've reviewed all of these on my channel somewhere. I should link my playlist below if you are interested in checking any of them out. And so they're probably my three that I use the most because they just have this really, really nice it's really funny because it, they have a gel consistency, but when you mix them with paint, it actually spreads the paint really, really far. So when I got this, I was kind of like, oh, I was expecting it to be more like a gel type formula, but it's actually very liquidy. And what this reminds me of a little bit in terms of how fluid it is, is, you, is working with um, the actual drying oils, which although I think they're amazing, they're just not my personal choice and a drying oil for example linseed oil which I have used uh, quite a few times before I have it somewhere <laughs> uh, and also you can get some other drying oils as well but linseed oil they sort of do the exact same thing in the sense that they can extend the drying time or quicken the drying time so I don't really use them that often because for some reason when I spread my paint with drying oils I feel it's just the actual feel of them when I'm painting with them. I, they just feel slightly drying and they don't spread quite as far. And I, it's just an actual feel of the paint. It's nothing to do with the finish because the finish is always really beautiful with them. So it's just my personal preference and everyone prefers different things. You get artists, you know, using all different types of mediums and it makes no difference really. But that was just my feeling. So I thought I would test this out a little bit. But if I'm not uh, feeling it on this, because with landscape you have to spread the paint really far, so if this turns out to be um, a little bit more like a drying oil, then I'm going to use it, I will use it again for something else, like possibly a still life or a kind of 
close up of a cat or something. So this says high gloss, rapid drying, which is always great, non-toxic. So this is really great if you are um, interested in non-toxic sort of painting stuff. <laughs> Use sparingly, three to nine drops of medium to one inch of colour. That always sounds really scary and technical, but I think that uh, basically what you need to know is just put a little bit of medium in comparison to your paint, so you don't need to panic too much about that. Uh, and then observe that so that's essentially, um, you know, when you're layering. Over dilution of colour can cause surface of beading on painting. If beading occurs, <laughs> add colour to mixture and until beading ceases, okay? I've never heard this beading concept, that sounds really interesting. Danger, rag steel wool or waste soaked with walnut alkyd medium may spontaneously catch fire. Well, that's encouraging. <laughs> okay, so, so yeah, that sounds interesting. Well, I sincerely hope that nothing happens. I'm sure it should be okay. I just make sure not to soak it in anything um, or soak anything in it, let's put it that way. So yeah, so I'm just going to do like a little painting of a, I have in my mind like a ship and a really tranquil scene and I had a copyright free image that I had of like a um, really peaceful sea, I don't know why I keep closing my eyes, <laughs> like really peaceful landscape and you know, a ship kind of drifting and so I'm going to start working on that and then I will come up here intermittently as I'm painting and just to tell you about my progress. I mixed the walnut alkyd with some green and radiant turquoise and white to make the sky and the sky is really nice a blend of these kind of really soft pastel greeny blues with some lighter blues as well and I really like to make the sky darker on the outskirts <laughs> the edges of the canvas and then work my way in and work into the center and then making it lighter and lighter and I always think that looks really good because when you get into the center of the painting that's normally where your focal point is so in this case it will be this galleon and so I wanted it to really stand out against the background so therefore the lighter the tones I have in the background the better. As you can see the uh, al the walnut alkyd has made a really nice kind of sheen to the paint However, I did actually end up swapping the mediums now, and I'll talk about that in a second. I'm just going to come on camera in a second and talk about it. And I'm continuing to blend quite a lot. And this is a synthetic brush I'm using. It has quite a long handle, which I really, really like. And so I can sort of be at a distance when I paint. It's kind of an unusual experience, but it feels, uh, I feel like it gives somehow some kind of accuracy, even though I'm probably less close to the paint as I normally am with a shorter brush. And I've stuck to the synthetic hairs. These seem to suit my style of painting much more than the kind of hog hair brushes or the bristle brushes. I find them to be a little bit too harsh. And I find that when I'm painting landscapes, which is what I, what I paint the most, I feel that the synthetic brushes seem to work best for that to get this really kind of smooth blend, sort of seamless blend. And I really like the way that this paintbrush does that. I did decide to skip on this for now and go back to using the gambling gel to mix my paint, just because I feel that it did have a slight drying oil feel to it, which is really, really great for uh, portraits and things, but I don't feel it works quite as well for me personally when it comes to landscape. So I'm going to test it out again. And when I do a portrait or possibly a cat or something, I'm going to try it out. And maybe even a still life because um, they do actually work really well. So I filled out a lot of the sky now, uh, jumping ahead. And I really like having the paint wet when I start to work on any kind of reflection because it's so important really, f shadows, reflections, if the paint is wet, it is so much easier to blend together because you never see a shadow or a reflection standing completely separately as a kind of block of colour away from the, what it's surrounding. And so what's really nice about having a wet layer, you can start to blend it all together and you can merge the colours from the reflection of the boat into the rest of the scene and so it really looks a lot more realistic and it looks like it could exist as opposed to it being such a block of solid colour which never really works in my opinion and so that element of keeping 
everything very doing everything I guess in one kind of sitting so sort of really working fast to make sure the paint isn't dry yet uh, is very useful at this stage and luckily oil paints take a long time to dry so you never really have that worry in the first couple of days if you want to go back to it and continue to work and of course you can get super fast drying mediums but you can also get mediums that will take much longer to dry and so therefore you have even more time to work on it but for me the fast drying mediums are fine because I normally get everything done roughly in the first couple of days and I'm making sure that I get these tones sort of similar but some variation is fine if you ever find yourself uh, working on colors where you can't sort of match the color again then it's just um, a good idea to keep working and keep mixing your colors on your palette and eventually you will actually find the right color i think it's always a bit of worry that you've created this amazing color and then you're worried that you can't create it again but if you just keep mixing and mixing until you um and add lots of different colors and shades and tones you will eventually get to you know the point where you're happy with the shade you've you've created and here you can see again, just really trying to keep everything so smooth and blended. And I wanted to, to the nuances and I wanted the, the, the transitions between the colors to be very subtle. And so from a distance, I suppose it will look like there's very little variation and that I used a lot of very similar tones. But in actual fact, when you go close up, they were really quite different. I mean, I added quite a lot of different colors, but I made sure to just blend them so much that it just, to the eye, initially, from far away, it looks like it's just, you know, it's very similar shades. And uh, I'm adding a, quite a lot more medium here because it's a very light part. But generally speaking, I don't, uh, like, add very little paint in comparison to medium. I try to keep the ratio between the medium and the paint, I, I try to keep it as much more paint than medium. And just because I found in the past that when I have used the opposite way, that there is there can be a tendency for streaking to occur, even though even when I do use blending brushes. So I never really shear up my paint that much. And I think that works best for my particular style of painting. So absolutely incredible. This is my favourite colour of all time. It's called manganese blue hue. And I was so amazed to find that Emma Graham actually did it because not many brands do it. It was a colour that was discontinued a few years ago. And so when I saw that they did this colour, I just thought, yes, it's meant to be. And so I got it. And it is incredible. It does. It's so smooth. It um, spreads beautifully and has a wonderful pigmentation. It doesn't quite have the when you thin out the gambit one, you get a really interesting colour. It's almost like a mix between green and blue, but it's very it's very difficult to describe. And I don't think there is a single colour that I've ever owned that actually comes out that way. It's almost turquoise, but not quite. It's a little bit more green than that. And so this didn't quite have that. This just had a more like true blue when you thinned it out completely, but it still looks beautiful. And I really, really like the way it came out. So I'm so impressed by the paint and I will recommend it to everyone because there was no scent on it at all. And I just thought it was wonderful. I, there was a slight scent on this, but not offensive, not strong or anything. Always make sure you keep your windows and things ventilated. Obviously, your windows ventilated, your rooms ventilated so when, you, when you use anything, any paint anyway. But just, uh, just a sort of note about the... Um, sense because I do think that is it can be bothersome if you're painting for long amounts of time and so I'm super impressed by both things I still thought that the uh, pigmentation of the paint came out really really nicely when I mixed it with this so definitely a high quality medium for sure and yeah just really really liked it in terms of the painting I think it's going quite well I just I'm not quite, uh, this part where I'm blending is always really fun, but when I get to the actual painting of the galleon, that's going to be the real test because obviously that's sort of from my mind and quite often the construction of it, at least when I construct it, tends to fail quite considerably. For some reason in the past, I've painted like really short ships and with really fat sails and <laughs> it's looked like blobs or something like triangular blobs and 
other times when I've just painted them with too many, um, I was going to say storks, <laughs> what are they called? <laughs> wooden things the wooden poles there you go sails that's it um when i've painted too many sails and so it's just been so overcrowded and you can't see what exactly it is so this in this case i'm going to try my hardest to get it the right way and i think what i'm going to do is if it goes if it's too short i'm just going to keep like painting it higher and higher <laughs> to the point where it no longer looks like a pitiful tiny little ship of nothing though so i'm just going to like keep painting it until it reaches this kind of like majestic ship and who knows it won't be such a terrible disaster like it has been in the past I think I've always managed to rectify it somehow but it's never come across it's never been painted how I wanted it to so I think when you see um, these beautiful paintings of ships they always look so regal and they have a great sense of force about them and whenever I've painted them I kind of look a little bit like you know, they've been on the seas for some really long time and they just like collapsed inwards or something. So yeah, I'm going to try my hardest. And also there's another difficult thing when it comes to actually getting the details just perfectly, like making sure that the um, things that hold up the sails, <laughs> you can tell my, my knowledge of ships and galleons is just so superior. It's like when I'm talking about art, oh, so, I like, you know the knowledge is there but everything else it's just like <laughs> um but when yeah when they, those things that hold up the sails they always look like a big mess because you've got to obviously have a very tiny brush and i do have some liner brushes but they're all too floppy and you really need a stiff liner brush to get to get the perfect you know like thin precise line so I don't have the right brush, you can always use that as an excuse. <laughs> of course, if you have a bigger brush, you can really use the end um, the corner of the brush to create that really, really fine line. So that's what I'm going to have to do because I do have a, a very thin brush. I also have a um, sable brush, which is really good for blending and particularly for portraits, actually. So good tip for anyone who is a portraiture artist. I do plan to do some more portraits in my future videos because I've been mixing it up with portraiture on my Instagram. However, I haven't done one on my YouTube for a while, so I probably will do one. And uh, yeah, so that will be coming up in a future video. So I'm gonna start restart painting again and see what happens. I am absolutely feeling the tension here of trying to build up this ship because of course I, I'm just trying to guess as to what it would look like in my head. And in fact, the concept of this painting was really just this ship that was kind of floating in this really still water and that it had kind of reached the end of its journey and it was so close to home and so close to the shore and it's got to that point where it, there's so much joy because it's so close to reaching its destination that it's just allowing itself to slowly gently drift on the, on the sea and it can see home you know in the distance so this was the concept and i'm just trying to make sure that actually the paint is so wet behind uh the when i'm painting at the moment as in the sky is so wet that i'm just really mapping out the color very very roughly so it looks very faded here but i'm just purposefully not adding much pigment because i just want to map out the sails and map out where all the lines go <laughs> with this tiny brush that I'm using. However, it's still not really tiny enough for the smallest detail. I really need to get a much smaller brush than this, but this is still very good, very, very good for, you know, the very small areas. And I obviously tried to make one side of the ship in shadow and the other side in the light. It's always very important to think about the light. For me, it's one of the most important things in terms of painting the light is just it's everything when it comes to uh any anything that i create so the absolute number one factor so even when constructing this i was thinking about where the light was coming from and that was a really fun part of creating this because once you start adding in where the light is and the shadows then it starts to look much more three-dimensional and much more uh, you know coming it comes really comes to life and so that's really a great thing about lighting and here you can see that i 
<laughs> did build it up very, very high. <laughs> and I'm really quite pleased with the way it looks here. Of course, it's not the absolute perfect galleon that I, I mean, I was a bit uh, confused by the spoke thing on the end. I don't know what that is, but I still think it is a better attempt than some of my previous attempts. So I'm much happier with it. And I did add some pink to the sky in the background. I don't know if you can see, but I tried to um, hint more of that kind of pinkish glow in the background. And there are some visible brush strokes as well within the sea, and I do really like to leave some brush strokes in. I'm just adding some darker clouds here just to give a sense of more dimension. Again, there's more in front of the sky. It's not just completely flat. There are some darker tones of cloud in the front, so it gives it even more of a... Um, more of a three-dimensional quality and again just adding a little bit of the darkness there into the sea and this blue is really beautiful it's Prussian blue and this is also one that I got from M. Graham and it's very very nice very rich color it's very very dark which is amazing I mean it looks almost black when you put it on your palette so really interesting color and a really really wonderful nicer than just the standard kind of navy blue that you get sometimes i mean it's not actually called navy blue it's called something else but you know what i mean so continuing to add these little soft clouds of course even when i put them there i have to make sure that i blend them out otherwise they just look like a bit of a jagged line and so luckily because the paint is still very very wet behind um I, it's very easy for me to blend out those clouds and make them really wispy and soft and have that really soft tone. And so there we are. I really hope that you guys like this painting. Um, I think it turned out okay. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this painting session. As you can see, the ship just ended up going like to the highest heights so when I reached the sky because I just thought I've got to make it as big as possible. I think it's definitely worked out better than my previous attempts, though. It hasn't, obviously, because being a perfectionist, even though I never reach perfection, I still think I can get it to a place where it's better than it is at the moment. So it's definitely improving, but just at least I'm just going to say all I'm going to say now is at least it's not worse than before. So I do hope you liked this painting session and that you uh, enjoyed the actual painting itself. Do let me know if you've tried any of these materials and uh, if you like the painting of course don't forget to like and subscribe thank you again for your amazing comments in my last video and i will see you soon take care guys